I'm Casey Cowdery. Perhaps you've had the same urge to make an installation art piece. Mine is fiber art, and this is the story. So that you have an idea of the composition, this is the overall shot of 400 million tons installed at the St. Louis Artist Guild in their ramp gallery. I asked the Guild if we could use the ramp gallery to take pictures because my photographer's studio is too small. As luck would have it, there was nothing in the gallery at that time, nor for the next month, and well, they liked it, so it was invited to hang for about five weeks in conjunction with a show in the main galleries. Overall, this piece is pretty and even whimsical, but the essence is to comment and bring attention to plastic in our oceans, 400 million tons of it. Life is Good is the title of the first segment you will see, two pieces at about 90 by 30 inches. They are meant to bring to mind an idyllic earth with pure air and clean water. So, how did we get along before the internet? Silhouettes of fish and birds made my life easier. Flying fish hang from the 90 by 30 backgrounds at the point where water and sky meet. A tropical fish shape, you'll see a lot of these. Birds, three-in-one image here, what a bonus. When I use someone's images, they are changed so that they become my own artwork. My use is only to get a shape more easily so that I don't have to take the time to draw it myself. This is my flying bird pattern after I changed it to suit my needs. My plan was to make tiny quilts in the shapes of birds and fish. As with all my projects, a hunt in my stash comes first. A narrow strip of zebra stripe fabric and some ice dyed remnants appeal to me. Zebra stripe on one side, ice dye on the other, with lightweight batting between. Yeah, that sounded good to me. Then quilted with 1 16th inch silver colored mylar. That mylar came from my mom's house when she moved her independent living apartment, and that was maybe 15 years ago. Are you getting a theme here? Salvage and reuse? I kept making birds and fish this way until I ran out of zebra stripe and all the scraps were saved. Here is Life is Good, one of the two pieces at 90 by 30 inches. The birds and fish were suspended with white sewing thread to dangle and move with a breeze. The dappled light through the piece is imagery that I've always liked. Steady light at the Guild illuminates through the layers of this quilt. It hangs under one of the light fixtures. A detail so you can see the dangles and the stitching. Next is 87%, which is two pieces at about 96 by 42 inches. This title comes from research that has found 87% of our oceans are polluted. 87%. These nets were inspired by drag nets that scour and damage the ocean floor. Now we're into the darker side of 400 million tons. At the top is the homemade fabric before it was cut. Below is the same bird pattern in a trial run making my own layered fabric. The way I made the fabric for this part of the project was from two layers of poly sheer with my scraps between. Fast machine stitching and quick movement gave me a puckered fabric. That gave a little loft to the pieces and still kept the sheer quality. When the cutouts were made, the fabric flattened quite a bit. Was that good or was that bad? Well, that is what it was, so that is just what it is. The cutouts have flattened but still retain some texture. Once cut, the edges had to be closed off to keep the scraps trapped between the layers of sheer. There are birds, fish, and later you will see my rendition of coral. Because I enjoy stitching, both sides are finished, although you will see that only one side can be seen when installed overhead. But then one never knows how pieces will be used in the future. To begin, a running stitch near the perimeter of each piece secured the sandwich. I used a loose French knot action to make the curly look and snagged it into the running stitch. On the opposite side, six ply floss is wrapped under and over the running stitch. The next step was to burn holes in the polish here with a soldering iron. It took me quite a while to get the nerve to burn holes in all that work. 
Difficult to see, but look at the bottom fish in the middle and see the brown marks. Also near its nose, look at the little blue squiggle. Those are the burned holes. Just a clue, the poly puts off fumes. I wore a mask. If you do this, a mask is a good idea. The holes are meant to show degraded birds, fish, and coral. Those burnt holes were outlined with embroidery, more running stitch around the holes, then three ply floss stitched around the running stitch and piled on top of itself to get a thick and thin appearance. I particularly enjoyed this stitching, very creative and I feel it is quite beautiful. An in progress shot, it's a mock up of the finished piece to give me an idea of its final look. To begin, I had snipped and ripped sheer poly for the strips needed to make a net and laid some of them out on the dining room table, then added the pieces that were to be sewn to the net. Here is one net completed and photographed from below. Mesh from citrus bags and wads of yarn and ravelings were attached to simulate the junk and plastic in the oceans. Ravelings, you might ask? When the poly is snipped and ripped, it ravels like crazy. There was so much snipping and ripping that the ravelings added up. My general goal is always to make poignant and interesting work while getting as close to a no-waste studio as I can. A detail? The rose-colored items are my take on coral. The coral was worked in the same way as the birds and fish you saw earlier. Originally, this was the end. I was done in early September 2020. The plan had been to hang the four pieces at the Union Avenue Christian Church of St. Louis in their Gretchen Bingham Gallery. The gallery has four columns, and they are in a square configuration, making four openings between. Four pieces would have been perfect there. The gallery director, Carla Duncan, and I had talked back in July and rearranged the schedule. Because of COVID, our exhibit was postponed from December of 2020 to December of 2021. Fingers crossed that that will happen. It will happen eventually. But several fish shapes unfinished were left over, and the series Swimming with Trash was born. In progress, the piece on the left is well along. The center piece was well along also, but later was taken apart. The background under the shear was changed. Number three is just started, as you can see. Here is a close-up of the first piece. More homemade fabric, fish shapes are attached. In addition to the original tropical fish, the leftovers, I made very small fish. They are two layers of blue shear, blanket stitched with three-ply floss to protect the edges from fraying. On some of the small fish, six-ply floss is threaded under the strands of the blanket stitches. That makes a dotted edge on the little fish and it draws attention to them. You'll see that later. This is where Deborah Weltman came in. Although I like these pieces, they needed more depth of meaning, and I felt my goal to talk about plastic in the oceans was not obvious enough. My plan from the beginning had been to bring in the pollution issues with artist statements. I felt I needed more. Deb is a writer and agreed to write sayings, and she went on to give me lots of information to use when writing artist statements. Deb has prepared her thoughts and says, Personally, I find art with a message to be a favorite, although art for the purpose of exploring creative mindset can be pretty awesome too. Artists of all kinds over history have used their personal creative platforms to speak out about changes society should make. To name just two, Pablo Picasso's Guernica illustrates the anguish brought on by war. And Billie Holiday sang Strange Fruit, a song about lynchings. This is the finished triptych, and I consider them to be individual pieces too, with titles and artist statements. To make these, my homemade sheer fabric was folded around very stiff and thick interfacing and sewn to the back of the interfacing. In the case of the largest piece, scraps of ice dye fabric were fused to the interfacing so it would show through the shear. Gallery wrapped canvases are the backgrounds for these three pieces. Those are spray painted to color the edges. The work itself was then sewn to the edges of the canvases. Not too difficult, but pliers are needed to pull the needle through. 
Depth seams are printed on printable fabric and sliced apart with a rotary cutter into single lines of type. Those were sewn tacked onto the surfaces. Also blank strips are sewn to the surface for interest. You can see the white elements in this detail. You can also see the dotted edge on the little fish here. Take a look through the shear and see eye side scraps fused to the interfacing. More strips with sayings were left over, and you may have gathered how I am obliged to use things up. Detritus was a last minute piece to fill out the installation at the Guild. It has four layers of poly shear. Strips with sayings were sewn to the second, third, and fourth layers. They are obscured under layers of shear as if in water. It moves beautifully with the slightest breeze. We did the installation over two days, so I dyed fabrics were scrounged from my stash and quickly ironed. Along with extra fish and birds, the space was reasonably filled out. I'm glad I made as many fish and birds as there was zebra striped fabrics, and there were way too many tiny fish. They were put to use here too. T-pins made for an easy installation of the fabric and the birds and fish. The pins went right through the drywall using a hammer. Well, usually they went right through, but sometimes they bent and we had to use another pin. That is the story of 400 million tons. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the presentation.